I just looked up at the clock and speaker on the wall and just imagined like a school bell. A bell going. going I, I believe I have the bells turned <laughs> off for you. <laughs> It'd make a great cold open. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the same page. If you don't already know me, I'm your host, Jenna Clausen lover of books, sympathizer of book-to-movie adaptations, and owner of an embarrassingly long TBR list. Each month, I'll be bringing on a bookish friend or two to discuss some of our current and favorite books, as well as a few recent binge-watches, and to share in a buddy read. Grab a drink, join the discussion, and let's find out if we're on the same page. My guest today is my mom, Kelly. She's back on the podcast after our holiday-themed discussion of Skipping Christmas last December. While we here at the same page don't recommend asking a lady her age, I can assure you that she has at least a few years of reading under her belt. And she's the reason behind my own love of books. She doesn't have much in the way of social media, but feel free to send any love or fan mail our way, and I will gladly pass it along. And with that, let's jump on into the episode. Hi, Jen. Hi. Welcome back to the same page. I love being on the same page. Because <laughs> it's a pun. Because it's a pun. Oh, excellent. Uh, we just did, <clears throat> Nick and I, we did a couple of episodes. And one of the episodes, he was like interviewing me. It was a whole weird thing. Um, but he decided he was going to do the intro and he forgot the name of my podcast. Oh. And I was like, and you, you helped come up with the name of the podcast. And you were still married. I know. <laughs> and I was like, I, how? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, so welcome. Thanks. I apparently didn't scare you away after we did uh, Skipping Christmas. No, I had a lot of fun with that. In fact, I was talking to a lot of the girls at work about <laughs> Uh, your podcast and how much fun it is to listen to and to be a part of and and so forth. So they're all quite jealous and anxious <laughs> to listen to the next several. So you were yeah. like, I'm going to be on this podcast. Everyone should listen. <laughs> just, just pay attention. It's my girl. <laughs> and of course, you know, being the high school you graduated from, half of them go really. <laughs> I know. They're like, wow, she still can't get a real job. Huh? <laughs> no, they go, the theatrics continue. Why, yes. Yes, I they know. do. <laughs> she still can't be normal is, is more like it. <laughs> uh, they didn't say that, but they could uh, have well, been they, thinking. It. They thought it's probably. <laughs> yeah, okay. maybe. Maybe could have been thinking. <laughs> um, so we, oh, let's start with this. We're in kind of a weird space. We are in a weird moment. space. <laughs> Welcome to my school. Yes. Speaking, or your school. Speaking of the school that I went to high school in, uh, yeah. that's where we are. <laughs> Welcome to the Jag. We're yes. Now in the jungle. There's a jaguar behind me uh, because your house is filled with lots of fun sounds right now. <laughs> yes. We decided to redo the floors in our home. And to do that prior to Jenna and Nick's wedding ceremony celebration up here in May, mm-hmm. um, because I have this thing about mm-hmm. always wanting things to be perfect. I, I'm sure that some would say under- control freak. I can't imagine Some why. might mistakenly <laughs> call it that. Um, but this has been a long time coming, and it just happened to coincide, ironically, with the time when you said a couple weeks ago, hey, can I come up and crash for a week? Uh, well, not quite a week. It hasn't been, unfortunately. But uh, we could not really stop that process <laughs> and still make our May deadline. So, yes, today they were ripping up floors. In the last three days, they've so, been moving furniture. Well, lots of construction we've sounds. been moving furniture. Yeah. It was, I was <laughs> talking to Nick. On Jenna and I was talking to Nick. I was like, man, I'm just so excited because I haven't really had any time to relax in the past, like, <laughs> year. And so and maybe then. this is it. This is my week. I'm going to have a nice, relaxing week at my parents' house, get lots of reading done. I brought, like, four books with me because I thought I was going to relax and read. <laughs> Yeah. And then. (laughs) And then the nightmare. So So. we were sitting uh, on the (laughs) one piece of furniture that is now sitting in the middle of our living areas in our great room. As our voices were echoing off the walls (laughs) and bare floor. And 
my dad and my brother came in with their uh their hammers and they were like we're still gonna be working in here and, and we were like how are we supposed to be doing it but yeah long story long we long. told them that we were running away from home for a bit and we <laughs> i picked up my laptop and i picked up my microphone <laughs> and and, out we went. and we carried them to the school and so we <laughs> locked ourselves in a conference room <laughs> Because my desk is too busy. <laughs> there are still people coming and going. So so yes. here we are. So here we are. And so that explains this next bit. Normally, this is where I would say, what are we drinking? Oh, and yes. We, we would talk about the fun cocktails that we were drinking. We did have some great plans, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. So we'll be doing that later. Uh, oh, yeah. We will be uh, having a margarita or three later. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, short of potentially. Uh, raiding the uh, vending machine. <laughs> there is nothing we could yes, we could do here. You forget I haven't had students in the building, so the vending machine probably has dust and maybe a water that expired in 2019. <laughs> you should see some of the stuff done I found in your pantry today. Okay, let's not talk about that. There was something that expired in 2011. Did we just throw it away? Yes. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I, so, yes. Anyway, that is why we are in this lovely conference room. Of yeah, so we're in gray. a weird space. <laughs> we With are very close together, so the audio will probably not be great. Or it'll be uh, really smashing. <laughs> we'll end up just using one audio. That is so possible. So that I don't have to splice you them and together. You will be tweaking it <laughs> for days to come. Um, and we don't have any drinks. Uh, but we are here and this first episode once i find my my list <laughs> I'm, i lost it uh here we go i'm gonna ask you a couple of reading questions okay because when you were on the podcast in december mm -hmm. you only did a discussion episode so right. we didn't like because it was before it was still season one so right. it was before i had like figured out what the show was gonna look like moving forward right so we didn't get to know you at all Okay. Uh, so, are, do you want to just jump on in? Sure. Okay. Go team. So, if you are going, you're like in a bookstore and you want to pick out a book for the day or for a beach trip, a weekend, whatever. Escaping what you, for the weekend with Tim or without Tim? <laughs> little of column A, a little of column B. Okay, because those are different uh, books. Yeah. What are some of your go-to genres? I love a good mystery novel. Yes. I, I, I love a good mystery novel. Um, years and years of, of Agatha Christie uh, mm -hmm. um, just really spoke to me as a young kid, believe it or not. Cause I Nana had to get read my, those. my love for, of them from somewhere. Yeah, Nana read those. And so they were always plenty uh, of them around and readily available. <laughs> so uh, if I am doing something where I'm going to be able to sit and read unfocused, um, the mystery novel, a romance novel. I mm -hmm. love a romance novel, especially if I'm in a more playful mood or a more playful arena. If you're at the sure. beach in the sunshine with oh, yeah. pina you, colada, you, you want need, a tropical romance. You need a good, like, <laughs> or, fluffy mm -hmm. uh, contemporary romance. Yes, with or a, beach. a really fun mystery. And, and I did pull a couple of those for you to read, uh, like My Taiwan On. <laughs> who for the life of me I can't remember the author and I know I should so you'll have to look that up later yeah but she's written several books and they're all very fun set in a beach vibe and so if I were going Love somewhere that. like that um I a cruise ship so I you, want you a pulled cruise. it for me to read when we're in Hawaii yes I did <laughs> I did I kindleized them so you could read them on your kindle um anyway so that type of thing if I'm going to the woods, I may pull something nostalgic, like mm -hmm. a little house on the prairie or something oh my gosh. that takes me takes me back. <laughs> Christmas time, I always want to read a Christmas novel. I don't care whether it's a romance or a mystery or um, anything like that. It, yeah. it Seasonally, I find that I tend to pull things. Um, really, if I am going to be focused on something or spend a weekend with your dad where he's where he's been working on something. That's where I'll pull something like Becoming with Michelle Obama, something like that that I wanted to read or the story that Tim Russert wrote a hundred years ago. I remember. Oh, yeah. yeah, because those kinds of things, you really have to be in the moment with them. 
Mm-hmm. And so you, you can't, even I can't pick those up, put them down, pick them up, put them down. It's a solid, I want to sit down and read it. And so that mm-hmm. has to, you have to have time for that kind of thing. So if I'm going away for the weekend, I'll tend to pull something from where I'm going. Because I'm a dork that for way. For sure. Oh, no. I, uh, the book that I read and discussed on the podcast three books ago now, I want to say, uh, I didn't know before I picked it up to start reading it, is set in Maui. Oh, my gosh. And so I was just reading it like, hmm, getting very excited. <laughs> I am excited for that, too. too. I've uh, never been there. so <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I haven't either. I'm very excited. But yeah, so reading things to like get you excited for upcoming trips. Or to learn something or, about where you're going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Or yeah, reading uh, one of the books that I know at this point I am not going to read yet. I'm like, save. it's been on my list for so long and I told myself I was going to read it in the first half of the year. Mm-hmm. But now I'm postponing that so that I can read it in Hawaii because it, I believe, takes place in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. So like <laughs> things yeah. like that. So you feel my so pain. Oh, 200%. I mean, we actually have very similar reading styles as far as what we like to read. Yes, that's probably true. And again, that's probably because it was plentiful for you. Mm-hmm. They were available. You could grab one and take yeah, it to an absolutely. appointment or a rehearsal or an audition. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But like, I love an Agatha Christie or a sort of whodunit type mystery mm-hmm. or a uh, romantic comedy. Uh, yeah. A Regency romance, things like that. Yeah, and I do love the the new twist that, well, I guess it's not new anymore. Holy <laughs> smokes. Uh, Catherine Coulter, Julie Garwood, they do a mm-hmm. lot of the the really tense. <laughs> There's always a tinge of romance to them, but the mystery, the puzzle to solve is yeah, like really a- like a romantic suspense type yes, novel. Yes, yes, except mm-hmm. I often feel like the romance portion of that is superfluous in some ways it's like yeah if yeah. it's there great if it's not there great i have a couple uh, books I need, I need to make you read that kind of fall in the romantic suspense yeah category one of them is a little intense and involves children so might not make you read that one uh there was one and i wish i could remember which of my favorite 27 authors it is but uh one very similar uh where a young girl is found in the woods and it's this psychological way that they have to get around to figuring out what actually happened and oh my gosh they are, it's like, okay, no, five more minutes. I promise I'll get dinner in five more minutes. You don't know anything about that, do you? Oh, I do. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Guilty. So we have talked about before, mm-hmm. and you always make fun of me for when I talk about it. Uh-oh. You're a very fast reader. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you literally got home from work today. Yes. And read a book. <laughs> I didn't finish it before while, we left. While I was making notes for the podcast. Well, because we were stuck in the bedroom and I couldn't, <laughs> I didn't feel like we could be anywhere doing anything. So uh, yes, yeah, yes, I am. A, yeah. I have it's always advice. Been, I've always been so jealous of that. Have you always been that fast of a reader? Is it something that like, just because you were reading so much, it, you got faster? Like what? You know, I... <laughs> <laughs> I think I, that's an interesting question. I mean, I, I've i been married for so very long in some ways that I hardly remember the time before being married. And I've sure. been a fast reader the whole time I've been with your dad because it it's just I, I can read in 10 minute increments because I've had to have that ability. I think that it, in college, I'd read pretty fast. Now, if I have to read a textbook or something and, and oh, yeah. study it, that's a very different thing than For reading. Sure. And, and I'm probably not as fast at that. One of the things that I do notice um, if I'm reading a brand new series of books or something is that I tend to read very quickly by skipping words like the, mm-hmm. a, and, um, and, and on occasion, you'll go, that doesn't make sense and have to go back and see what you've missed. Sure. So I think that's probably training that you just, if you read a lot, you just kind of train your mind to overlook some of those words. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons that whenever I have to send something out to parents, and here's a secret of my life, (laughs) somebody else has to proofread it. Yeah. Because I skip over the the things that you would normally, the first place you'll have a typo is a word I've skipped over in reading it. Sure. So at some point in my illustrious life and career, (laughs) um, I 
was told that part of what makes a fast reader is the ability to see yourself in a situation. The same way when you are reading a book and you become part of the book and mm-hmm. you do that, because we've talked about that, that's when you increase your reading speed. If you are mm-hmm. involved in the book, you read it faster. That's so interesting. Which can be a bad thing if you want it to end so you know what happens, but you don't want it to end because you want to keep going. For sure. <laughs> and those are both two sides of the same coin. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so talking about proofreading, when I started my blog mm-hmm. and I first started like getting advanced copies of some books and I was doing this, you were telling me that you had a bit of a history of doing kind of that same thing. I did. Long before you were born. How how old am I? Yes. <laughs> I mean... Yes, yes. It doesn't... I uh, <laughs> belonged to a book club. Um, at the time, Kristen Hanna, Debbie Maycomber, they all belonged to the same book club. And Which we still, with, today, yeah. see those names all over uh, Yeah, we do. And Kristen Hanna was always one of my very favorite. In fact, her Twice in Every Life, if you haven't read it, I so highly recommend it. Um... It's just one of those books that is it grabs you from the first page and you cry and you scream and you cry <laughs> and you love it and you hate it all the way through. It is it is truly an amazing read. Uh, but they belong to this book club and the little bookshop down in Sumner, uh, Washington. Uh, her name was Donna. And for the life of me, I can't remember her last name, but she, she talked me into going to this book club because I would go into her used bookstore and I was grabbing voraciously at the books. <laughs> And she said, but you never, she said, but you (laughs) never bring books to me. And I said, I can't get rid of them once I get them. Oh yeah. I don't know anything about that either. (laughs) I just can't get rid of them. And she's like, Hey, that's not, you need to not be thinking, you need to open a bookstore. I'm like, no, 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 I couldn't, I no, I couldn't let go. You know, Uh, anyway, she's the one that got me into reading advanced copies. So some of the authors that would say to her, Hey, do you have somebody that, and she would say, yes, I do. And so that's how I got advanced copies. She grabs 10 books a week because she reads them (laughs) too quickly. (laughs) Because she reads them. And she, you know, uh, really kind of turned me on to some of the most amazing authors that I had ever read books of. And some of them weren't great novels when I read them. And then I bought the finished product. And it was an amazing novel. So yeah. some of that was really was interesting. That was really interesting. Mm-hmm. And I mean, some of them did probably nothing to change. And I, some of the things I wrote back to them did nothing to change their ideas, plot lines, language, whatever it may be. But some of them did. And maybe in my own little way, I helped somebody sell a book. But yes, <laughs> it was very fun. So I was thrilled when you were um, getting advanced copies because I know how fun that is. And it it's kind of a it's kind of a way to get a window into somebody else's soul. Mm-hmm. I mean, we tend to, I think, women in general, but women in our family specifically, we tend to look at ourselves pretty honestly. Mm-hmm. But we don't always reflect other people's views of ourselves as honestly. Sure. <laughs> so I think sometimes um, when we give something back, we tend to open ourselves up a little bit more for that. So yes, I did do that. You're right. Yeah, that was I just, kind of crazy. That was something that I <clears throat> like a conversation we had never had until I started my blog and was like telling you about it, and you were like, "Oh, I used to do that all the time," and I was like, "Of course you did. <laughs> you beat me to it." <laughs> well, I never blogged, or I did. wouldn't even have known how to start that, or what it was, or any of those. Well, kinds blogs of weren't really a thing, well, at well, least that's as probably much. True. When that's you probably were doing true. It. But uh, <laughs> yeah. That's probably true. I'll give you that. But no, you've taken your reading and writing into a whole different direction. I mean, I I always wanted to be a writer. In fact, I bought a few books on how to be a writer Mm -hmm. because I could write amazing scenes. Mm -hmm. I could get you into a location, into a place, into a feeling. But if somebody had to talk, (laughs) I couldn't do that. So one of the things your dad and I always talked about was writing a novel together. Mm -hmm. Uh, once he retired well he retired and lord knows the house hasn't been the same since so (laughs) you know that man has yet to really retire that man he'd tell you he doesn't but oh no i come home and things have changed (laughs) so yeah someday maybe someday maybe we will because he would be very good at that with his analytical mind yeah somebody once told me you have to write as if you were hearing the conversation and (laughs) for some reason i can't make that synopsis connection 
Do I get to read an advanced copy? Absolutely. <laughs> Editor in chief. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> we'll bring you on. We'll talk about it on the podcast. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> so, because you read so much, mm -hmm. did you have any favorite books maybe that you read last year? I know you reread books a lot, but if there I were any, do. like, that you read for the first time, maybe? Actually, one of my favorite books last year is the one you had me read that you had just read, The Holidays. Yes. It was so it was dark so cute. cute. Oh, it's so <laughs> I mean, it just, it just I've really talked about it on me. so many episodes of the podcast because yeah. I loved it so much. Yeah, it just really <laughs> tickled me. Um, new books. Their um, uh, new book comes out in May. Oh, oh that's Singalong. pretty fun. That's pretty fun. So I'll probably have to read that one because it was super. Super. Uh, I, it just feels like this year has been so crazy with the COVID shutdown mm -hmm. that I have been reading, but there are no bookstores. And where I used to find a new author or a new series or a new whatever uh, was to go into the bookstore, wander around, touch, feel, look. Yeah. Um, somehow getting it on Kindle isn't the same. So one of the things I have found this year since 2020, uh, not 2021, but, you know, last year while we were all shut in, mm -hmm. is that I was rereading books on my Kindle that I had owned or the book itself was getting a little bit old and tattered sure. and frayed. I'd find myself reading those on Kindle or borrowing them from the library on Kindle if I was reading. Mm -hmm. because there was no bookstore to go and touch and yeah. feel. I mean, as it stands, there's so only one or two in the entire area yeah. that we that I live in. And so we if, only really closed have and Mobile, in federal way is the only one that we have close to us here. Yeah. Uh, and so without that, I don't feel like I've read anything new on my own. It's been only the things that you've said, hey, read this, or like the Michelle Obama book, because I knew it was coming out. And so I did get the pre-ordered copy. But otherwise, this year of all years, I really didn't read anything new. There was just mm -hmm. no ability to go out and find that. Yeah. Did you have a favorite, like, reread that you did? Well, I have been reading, rereading uh, Amanda Quick, which is actually a pen name for Jane Ann Krantz. She actually writes under three or four different pen names. I have a couple of authors <clears throat> that I read that do that too, and yeah. I'm like, how do you keep track? <laughs> I think it's the genre. I think truly that's how she does it. Is the genre each have different. Uh, pen names mm -hmm. but I've been rereading a bunch of her Amanda Quick novels they're the historical romance and they're just kind of a fun light read and I I, I hesitate to say that I can come home from work in a bad mood and read one of her books and feel better by the time I go to bed because you're just gonna say you read too fast which is true you don't read too fast <laughs> I'm just so jealous of how fast you read I just would very much like to be able to do that. <laughs> but it feels like a, she's somebody I have been um, really kind of going to during this time. Uh, the Kristen Hanna, I've been going back and rereading a bunch of those just because of the feeling that you get as you're going through it. We've all needed a little bit of that, I think. Yeah. A little bit of, hey, we can overcome these things or this event or this whatever it may be. And so... I think I've reread a lot of those. And of course, you know, I reread Harry Potter every summer. <laughs> so yeah. that's always a favorite read, which is kind of dorky because I could probably recite it <laughs> frame and I mean, you but... probably could, which is also impressive. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, not as impressive as you guys around the dining room table. But Oh, gosh, we're not talking about that. <laughs> um, so do you have any books that you're like really excited to read this year? Um, Usually I ask about if you have like new releases that you're excited for, but I don't know if you follow that quite as much. I haven't. Um, usually I say, Jenna, what should I read? Because you do follow that. And Can so, confirm. <laughs> so I get my, oh, I'm excited to read this from you uh, and what you have said. Hey, this is really great. And again, that probably goes to your reading taste being so similar to mine mm -hmm. that if you really enjoyed it, I'm probably going to enjoy it as well. Yeah. Um, so if I really need a book, I, I, I phone a friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the funniest bit, and I think I've mentioned this briefly on the podcast before too, but the funniest bit is that 
you don't necessarily phone a friend. You go to my Instagram. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> and then you text me. You text me, and you're like, "Oh, I bought this book that you were talking, <laughs> that you were about, talking about, so that we can talk about it." And it's yeah. the cutest. Yeah, I, I do do that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> And I do stalk you on Instagram. Is that creepy? <laughs> no. Uh, anyone other than the person who, like, gave birth to me and whatnot, probably weird. <laughs> um, are you someone that sets any reading goals, like, at the beginning of the year? Uh, Boy, I don't. And I've always been pretty impressed. In fact, it took me, I remember, quite a while to figure out what TBR meant when you had tackling <laughs> TBR. And I'm like, what the, where did she come up with that? It took me probably two years to realize it meant to be read. Random <laughs> name generator. <laughs> I, it was like, what the heck? Um, I, I don't. And I think I probably don't because when, and again, it probably is a, a factor of reading so quickly that when I, and I, I, I just interrupted myself, didn't I? Um, I, I don't okay. set a reading goal because when I pick up a book, I read it all the way through. Mm -hmm. Some people can pick up three or four books, including you. You know, you say, I'm reading this one. Oh, I Sometimes don't like more that. successfully than others. <laughs> but I, I don't do that. I, I've had friends that have done that over the years. And for me, it, that doesn't work. I can't. And I don't know whether it's that I can't focus on it or I can't enjoy it or whether I'm just too anxious to find out what happened. Because you know me, like if, if I know a movie's going to have a sad ending, I don't really want to watch it. I don't read the end of books. It annoys me when people do that. But yeah, I they like read the last yes. page first. Yeah. But sometimes I have to get through the book to find the end. So I've never really set reading goals because if I see a book and I'm interested in it, I read it and I'm done in a couple of days. So sure. it's not like I, I'm sitting with a stack of books to read. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. would probably be why I've never really set reading goals. I never... You never had to. Never had to. Wow. Just <laughs> Sorry. rubbing it in. <laughs> Sorry. I never that had to sound. because I'm such a so, good reader. So <laughs> toss, toss. <laughs> yeah, that, that did sound bad. I didn't mean it to. <laughs> Maybe you could cut that part out. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> oh, boy. I know. Sometimes it's not good to talk with your mother. <laughs> Again, going to be a question that you then might not have an answer for. Okay. But a lot of the time I will talk about like binge reading and a book that you just like you can't put down or you love it so much that you then go and buy the rest of the series and you sit down and read it. Yes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yes. I, um, yeah, I do actually have one of those. Uh, the there's a series of books by Nora Roberts. Mm -hmm. uh, she writes several trilogies. Um, one of my favorites are actually called the key trilogy. And I read the first one. Um, and I, it's the key of light key of valor key of. Mm, I can't remember. Anyway, I, I can't remember, but it's a, it's a trilogy. Mm -hmm. And I read the first one, and the next one wasn't coming out for a month. Oh, my gosh. The tapping on the table is, oh, like, just oh. getting on your microphone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm just, like, like, watching the <laughs> sound waves getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger. It's, it's probably because I was shaking the microphone. <laughs> but it's like I was so anxious for that second book to come out. And then the third book came out. And I, was like, oh, I was just, oh, I was crazy for that. Um, and she's done that with several books. And then, as you know, of course, Harry Potter. That was the big one because Tyler and I were fighting over who's going to read the seventh book first. Mm -hmm. um, so you won. Of course, I did because you paid for the book. <laughs> I paid for the book, and I'm bigger, <laughs> especially at the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, Nora Roberts has has been that for me. Uh, Catherine Coulter has an FBI series with Dylan and Savage that um, a husband and wife that come together in the first four or five books and then they continue to be together and, and they're FBI agents. And so I anxiously await for each one of those <laughs> to come out um, whenever it does. Yeah, I'm like, well, again, it used to be so much easier when you could go into the bookstore and say, oh, you type in the next release date 
yeah. or Diane Mott Davidson and all of her culinary catering mysteries with Goldie, mm. who, who's the caterer. I mean, I've mean, told you to try those because they're yeah. very fun little quick. Those things. are the ones with the really cute little covers. Yes, and yeah. recipes. Yeah, like Dying for Chocolate is the first yes. one. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they really have recipes which are quite good. I've made a few. <laughs> um, but it's just those really I used to go in and type in, when's the next one coming out? Because I would be so excited for those. It's been a while since I have run across a series that I just couldn't wait to get the next one. Um, <laughs> my phone just dinged. I know. Um, but I think that those are probably my favorite. And ironically, the ones I go back to the most. Yeah. Where I will I will start with the first one and then read the first one and the second one and the third one and on so on and so on for each of those in a series just because they are so much fun for me. And we both talk with our hands too much. I know. We're over here like this and then this. <laughs> well, somebody once said if you tied my hands behind my back, I wouldn't be able to talk. Oh, yeah. I remember and that. Wasn't it dad? It might have been dad. <laughs> might have been. And you still married him. He probably didn't say that until after we were married. <laughs> that would have been smarter. Yeah, that probably would have been clever. <laughs> uh, and then I know you said right now you are kind of just going through your bookshelves and picking up old things to mm -hmm. reread. Mm -hmm. So you probably don't necessarily have a like, uh, it's a last now next is this question that I usually ask. So like, this is what I read. This is the last book I read. This is what I'm currently reading. And then this is what I think I'm going to read next. Okay, so the last book I read was one of the uh, Amanda Quick books uh, called, what was, was it a Ivy Wed? I think it was the Ivy Wed. And again, it's a series. It's a Tobias and, oh shoot, I can't remember the heroine's <laughs> name, but she's my favorite part of the whole thing. She's just so spunky and sassy. Oh, love that. Yeah, she doesn't, she didn't, Letitia, Letitia, something like that. Anyway, she's just so spunky, I love her. So she, that was the last book I finished, that was yesterday. And then today, when I came home and you were making fun of me, that was a Katherine Anderson book called Early Dawn, which is uh, also a, a group, I, we were talking about, this, it's a group of books. They're all standalone, you don't need to read the next one in the series, but they are all connected. The they families take place are connected. in the same universe. In the same universe. The, yeah. And uh, so that's what I was reading today. And I'm kind of, now that I've talked about the key books, I'm probably going to pop over to Nora Roberts and read those key books again. Because they, again, it's an empowering series. And I find during this time, I really like to feel that young women have power that they've forgotten or perhaps never known that they had. Mm -hmm. um, partially because you are such a strong young woman that you've reminded me that that's out there. And so I like feeling like there's more of that in the universe than sometimes during this time in my life I, I recognize. Mm -hmm. So that well, would be my more. next. I'm going to hop into those because <laughs> then I'm going to make you read them when you're up here next time because <laughs> they're just so fun. And I'll be just uh, a quick read. We're going to be working on the move and you're going to help <clears> me move in and I'll just close the door behind you and I'll turn around and they'll be on the entry table. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yep, here you go. <laughs> Try these in your next three bubble baths. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I don't usually finish a book in a bubble bath. I can, oh. if it's a like really good oh. book, <laughs> if it's a good book and I'm just like really feeling the bubble bath, which has happened before, and Nick has, and Nick loves being like texting me being like, do you need a wine refill while you're in your bubble bath? And I'm like, I, do. Uh, <laughs> I have to say your dad has never bought me brought me wine in a bubble bath although sometimes he'll bring me a little charcuterie board like it's good. my baths have become very extra uh <laughs> but i have something i haven't been known to do like half a book in a, in a bath <laughs> if i just like stay in the bath for a couple well hours. this one you'll want to read in the bath and then get out of the bath snuggle in a bathrobe and finish because <laughs> they are fun I'm excited. And there's a message. Yeah, they're they're just fun. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite book of all time? Yes. It's kind of like asking you who your favorite child is. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my favorite daughter. Um, yes, I do. And it will surprise you, I think. Okay. Uh, it's Mrs. Mike. Really? It is. My favorite book of all time. It I always Mrs. see your, co your copy is on the bookshelf. I actually in have the guest two copies room. now. Dad and found so a new copy for me. Papa, 
brought that book home for me when I was, because he would go on a business trip and I, I was never one of the kids who always wanted a, a prize or a present when he came home. Yeah. But I always loved it when he brought books. Well, he happened to be at the airport or, I, I, boy, it's been so long. I, I can't actually remember the story specifically, but he met the author, Kathleen Friedman. Uh, he met her and she said, oh, I was just on this book tour. And I, I don't know anything because I was in elementary school. I just don't remember why he met her or, when, you know, was it a Boeing thing? Was it a, and she sat next to him on the flight. I mean, I really don't have any of those details, but he brought this signed copy of the book home for me. And I tried to read it when he brought it home and I, I just couldn't get into a it. A little above you. It in was, elementary school, probably. yeah, it was just, I, I just couldn't get into it. So I must, so we were still living in Auburn. And I remember sitting in the, what was my favorite place in the whole house, because we were never allowed in the living room, was down in the uh, family room overlooking the pool. And there was this big overstuffed chair. And I remember (laughs) vividly sitting in that chair with tears pouring down my eyes as in my, down my cheeks as I'm reading this book. And I couldn't put it down. And Nana, who, as you know, is not always the most patient person, um, came downstairs because I was not responding to her yelling at me. Oh, and no. I just never heard her no, say, No, Mom, I'm reading. You I, don't understand. <laughs> yeah. She, I was not responding. Um, and that, you know, that wasn't her favorite thing. Uh, and I remember her coming downstairs and taking one look at me and seeing me reading this book, curled up on this uh, this big overstuffed chair, and saying, come up for dinner when you're ready. And it's the only time in my life I remember her doing that. Um, but I finished the book. And dinner was well over. <laughs> I went up and there was still a plate waiting for me. And for years, I would read that book every time I got out of school. Mm-hmm. So kind of like I do the July read of, of Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. Every well, the I, last day of I school, read my favorite book every summer. The last day of school, mm-hmm. I would read Mrs. Mike. And I got to the point where, of course, I'd start it and I'd finish it the same day. But it is a true story. And there is some heartbreak in it. And there is some amazing passages where you think how can you how can you live through this uh, whether it's good or bad how, how do you actually live this and have it be real and yet yes that is my favorite book of all time and it's it's nothing like anything you would imagine that would stick with me in that way but it it really has so I still read that book every couple of years <laughs> although again I could probably repeat it verse to verse what's your favorite book that uh, you read every year. The Once and Future King. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Well, you got that from your dad. I know. That was Grandpa with a Mustache's favorite book. And that was why I picked it up was because Dad's it was his, favorite. it was Grandpa's copy. And it, I first picked it up when I was in junior high. So a long time like ago. you probably earlier than I should have been reading a 1000 page <laughs> epic about King Arthur. At least that type of book, yeah. Um, <laughs> Not geared necessarily for kids. No. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I picked it up originally because we had always had this gorgeous copy on the bookshelves in the living room, and I've always loved looking at the older books, even before I felt like I could really read them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we had this beautiful copy, and it was Grandpa's, and I have always felt this sort of connection with him and wanted to know more about him and so yeah I yeah. started reading that one it took me about like a year to get through the first time mm-hmm. yeah I do remember that <laughs> a long time long time <laughs> I retained none of it the first couple times I read it which makes it a fresh but, read every time I know, you I said that well, to me earlier <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah that's an, uh, an amazing book Dad finally had to fix the binding on that. I know. Yeah, he was afraid it would come apart. It's just, it's so beautiful. And it. I think that that book was what started my, really, I mean, like I just said, I've always loved the older books. Mm-hmm. But I think that book, like, really started something extending that love in me. And when I started uh, kind of collecting those old books from used bookstores where they were the old hardcover uh, books, really old-fashioned looking that just were almost falling apart. 
Well, they smell different and they mm-hmm. feel different and they sound and, different. And nobody's going to go in and buy them. And they need because, a good home. Because they they look like they're falling apart. But nine times out of ten, the reason that they are falling apart is because they've been read and reread and thumbed through. And they're just so beautiful. Yeah. That's the Velveteen Rabbit of books. Yeah. I mean, that was always one of your favorite stories when it, you were it was. a little bit. Was to this day, I, that's one of my favorite, like, standalone little kid books. Yeah. Yeah. I still have uh, the old, old copy of that book put aside for kids' books in my kids' book section with the old Velveteen Rabbit that you guys used to always play with the year, remember? That year. I saved that too because I'm a dork. Yeah. <laughs> There are some things that I just, I nostalgically can't get rid of. I'm pretty good about going through and saying, okay, I haven't touched this in a year. It's out of here. Mm. <laughs> Unless it's expired pancake mix, apparently. But <laughs> it, was not, it was like a sauce or something. <laughs> about getting rid of things. Yeah. But there are just a few things that I can't let go of because they meant so much to you guys when you were little. And the Velveteen Rabbit was one of your very, very favorites. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I mean, I think even as a kid, I was fairly empathetic. Like, the just true. like, I think that that part of me <clears throat> really clung to that book. Because that's the whole thing. I mean, that book, I don't know if that was like in the author's mind when they were writing it or, or not. And it just kind of happened accidentally. But that book is basically there to teach children empathy. empathy. You're right. I think it probably is. Whether it was intended to or not, I think that is the end result. And if we could just have world leaders read that book again as adults, (laughs) perhaps we would be in a better place today. I think more people should go back and read their childhood books. I think it is uh, therapeutic in the sense that it'll just make your soul happy to go back and read something that young you liked. Right. But also, like, these things that uh, are meant to teach children core values and like positive traits and things I think could do adults a lot of good well I think if some of us could remember our inner child a little more often and our absolute it's all about me mentality a little less we would find greater peace and happiness within our own lives Mm -hmm. let alone the world as a greater universe (laughs) I mean it's just Yes, I think that some of our some of our childhood beliefs get lost somewhere along the way. And if you don't actively try to hold on to the things that matter in life, you will lose them. Well, it's like um, uh, Polar Express, the mm-hmm. bell from Santa's sleigh is this most beautiful, magical sound. And then once you are an adult, you can't hear it anymore because you don't believe in the magic. Or like... Um, uh peter pan the whole thing is that the adults can't get to neverland and they can't see tinkerbell because they don't believe in the magic anymore and so that's why only kids end up in never neverland and you know all these things it's just it's a big part of literature that like you grow up and you kind of forget a lot of the good things about yes life and about uh the magic and obviously you're going to grow out of some of that and there are some things that get so much better as an adult i'm told (laughs) (laughs) um but uh yeah i just it's a recurring plot point for a reason i um i remember when we were looking your dad and i for the quote to put on the back of your iPod <laughs> all those years ago and that there was just never any question i mean it it was it was just such a moment because you were bridging that gap that year between believing and not believing mm-hmm. and um childhood to not yet adulthood but but beyond childhood where you're you're not an adult yet in your teenage years but you have moved beyond childhood and I remember that as we're sitting there, of course, I get all teary now and I'm crying. And I said, but she's got to always hear the bell. (laughs) And I remember your dad saying, that's it. Because it was, it was just such a moment in our lives where our, our last baby was really 
venturing beyond what we were doing anymore. I mean, when you're, when you have children, when you have your first baby, I mean, I've joked for years, you have your first baby and, and the pacifier falls on the ground. You go, oh no, you throw it away and you go buy new ones. Yep, buy another one. Your second baby comes along and you go, oh no, and you boil it. Your third, your third, your third baby comes along, you duck it in your vodka tonic and you give it to him. And when I go out, what is my go-to drink order? A vodka tonic. I order but, it the same way that you do. And I think it, it's, it stems back early. <laughs> but it, it is one of those moments where you realize that your, your last baby has crossed that threshold of, of childhood. And, and you'll always be my baby girl, but you're a wife and you have a life that doesn't include me and you have friends that I will never meet. And there is that moment in childhood where you know that's coming and it's coming like a freight train and there's no slowing it down and there's no stopping it. And you you just have to hold on for the ride. And I remember when we did that, that I just really wanted the magic of your childhood to never be something you couldn't look back on and hear the bell and remember what that magic felt like in that moment because there were going to come times in your life when you'd need it i think it backfired because i uh, <laughs> i still see the world much more like a child than an adult a lot of the time and i i don't know you're stronger than i am it's not a good thing most times <laughs> i don't think um kind of sticking with childhood a little bit i know you said mrs mike was huge as, like as a child, but also a bit more once you were able to read it when you got older. Mm-hmm. Do you have a book or a series or something that you remember picking up and being like, wow, I love reading and being like the reason that you loved reading so much? Well, as a very small child, the, the book I remember reading over and over to Uncle Dan, <laughs> so he was three, I would have been about 10, is 18 Cousins in One Little Oh Me, my gosh, that Which book. I then I read to you guys book. over and over again. So it's as a child, child, I'm Susie, I remember fondly, and 18 Cousins. But as I started to read and really look at to where I would be hiding under the covers, which I know you know nothing about, and reading with a flashlight. Yeah, I, I never got in trouble for staying up. That that's really, really was Trixie Belden for me. That mm-hmm. that really, and I'm sure that's why you asked that question. Uh, I read the third book first. I got it for a vacation we were going on when I was in seventh grade to Diamond Lake with friends of the family. And so I took that book and I took a Nancy Drew, uh, which I also was going to start reading. And I think that might've been the very first Nancy Drew that, that I, Nana bought for me for that trip. And so I took two books with me and within two days of our 10 day vacation, I was done with them and begging to go to the store <laughs> in whatever is closest to Diamond Lake to see if they had this, another one of those books. Um, and I read a lot, but I certainly didn't normally read books. But I remember laying out in the stars and I'll be darned if we just didn't lay out on blankets reading <laughs> for three or four hours. And I just really had to have another one of those books. And so I ended up um, getting the whole series that, that summer. I did get the whole series and I kept them for many, many years until they were destroyed. And I had to search around to buy them again. But yeah, so Trixie Belden and Nancy Drew were two of my Hardy Boys. Um, Drew definitely drew me into reading um, st- series books where you could go on and find the next mystery and the mm-hmm. next mystery. And, and I, where you can really, like, fall in love with a character, yes. too. Yes, and I didn't want to be Trixie. I wanted to be Honey Wheeler, <laughs> who was her best friend, because she was always the voice of calm. Mm-hmm. I always felt like, Die, and I can't remember her last name, but her real name was Diana. Uh, um, Lynch. Yeah, <laughs> Diane Lynch. I, I, People will know why I have that written down in a few minutes. <laughs> uh, didn't want to be her. She was too shy. Didn't want to be Trixie. She was too, she knew all the things. Yeah. And she was, she was always instigating trouble. And Honey was always the calm one. And she had the <laughs> Maybe cold. we should think about this. Maybe we should think about this. Plus, Plus, she had the ponies. She had the ponies. <laughs> and I really liked horses at that time in my life. <laughs> yeah. I, I've told you Nick's joke about horse girls, right? No. He always <laughs> jokes that there are two types of women, but like the ones that as kids were 
horse girls and the ones that as kids were unrequited horse girls. <laughs> so whether they actually had access to horses or not, but that everyone uh, was growing up secretly at some level a horse girl. <laughs> you know, I, I can probably get behind that. That's oh, true. So he always makes fun of me for being an unrequited horse girl. <laughs> but yes, I, I always wanted to be Honey because I just thought she was the voice of reason. And she had a great wardrobe that she shared oh, with yeah. everybody. And I was... I was really big about wardrobe. <laughs> was? Okay. I, I, yeah. Okay. So. Valid. You're right. I did. That was. <laughs> that was uh, a leading question. There was an ulterior motive there because I was pretty sure I knew the answer. Uh, so you are here for two episodes, yes. which we are recording both of them right here. We will start the other one as soon as we finish this one. Okay. Uh, so people who might be watching on YouTube will get clothes. very used to these clothes in this background. Um, but our next episode, the book that we are talking about, we are talking about two books, which is wild. Haven't done that on the podcast yet. But we are talking about Nancy Drew and Tracy Belden. Yes. Which is so fun. So like you said, you went back and rebought these like gorgeous old copies of Trixie Belden. The original, yeah. Mine were destroyed in a flood in the garage after Dad and I were married. Ugh. Yeah, and the house on Tatouche that we were just talking about recently having been in the news. Oh yeah. Yeah. That one. Um but yeah, and so anyone on YouTube if you want to look this like gorgeous talk about books that look well loved. It Somebody is, took that this on a cover. lot of camping trips. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the Trixie Belden book that we are going to be talking about is The Gatehouse Mystery. Uh, and then, so you have this one. And then I have a couple of these old copies of the Nancy Drew Mysteries. So I had this one that I brought up to Washington with me. And that is The Bungalow Mystery. And they are both the third book in their respective series. Mm -hmm. uh, so we thought it would be just kind of fun to read them both and kind of talk about them, kind of compare, com contrast, all that jazz. We also thought it was interesting that it was a bungalow and a gatehouse, which yeah. are both small dwellings, not your main living area. Or yeah. at least that was one of the things we thought was kind of fun about them, both and, being the third book and both being about that. And we're going to go into this uh, in the actual discussion episode as well, but they're kind of similar mysteries. They are <laughs> similar mysteries. I was surprised by that because I didn't uh, remember the Nancy Drew one until I read it when you brought it up. Yeah, and I, I didn't remember the Tricks of Belden. Um, but yeah, so just some quick information about this these books really quickly, just because we're recording this uh, back to back, but people probably won't be listening to them back to back. So the talk about Trixie Belden first. It is Trixie Belden and the Gatehouse Mystery. Author is Julie Campbell. Publisher is Western Publishing. And I'm going to not say the copyright years yet during this episode. Uh, I usually do when I go through the publishing information. But they surprised me. Yeah, and we so, talked about that. So I think we're going to wait and talk about that in the next episode. Okay. Um, and it is 234 pages. And then really quickly, Nancy Drew, it is The Bungalow Mystery. Author is listed as Carolyn Keene. Uh, that is a pseudonym. It is a ghostwriter who the original ghostwriter was Mildred Wirt, I believe, W-I-R-T. Um, publisher is Grosset and Dunlap, and this one is 180 pages. So I'm really, I'm super excited about those. Yeah, there was, it was fun to reread them. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just thought it was kind of fun. Like you had one, I had the other. We're going to like yeah. bring them together and read them. Yeah. Uh, so with that, I guess it is time to wrap this one up so that we can do the next one in time to go get a drink. Excellent. Because we so can't do that. Because we didn't have one during the recording. So, next time. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> next time I'll come up with a killer cocktail and we'll read one of the mysteries from the. Diana Mott Davidson. Ooh, I would love that. That'd be fun because she does some drinks in her in her book. So <gasps> we could themed find... cocktail night. You're saying? I am saying that. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nick and I were joking again. He's been on the past couple episodes, and we were joking that it's very easy if I need a last minute episode or I have someone drop out or whatever to force Nick 
to do an episode with me because he lives with me and he's married to me, so he can't really say no. Yeah. Um, but he's also not much of a reader. Like, he likes reading, but he is a pretty slow reader, mostly because he doesn't have time to read. Sure. Um, <laughs> and so you will probably, once I am living in the same state again, uh, become my go-to, I'm going to force you to be on the podcast reader because... I feel much less guilty about forcing someone to be, like, save my bacon and be on the podcast last minute if they can read the book in an hour. (laughs) True. (laughs) Plus, we have fun talking regardless of whether we're talking about books or boys or world travel or the State (laughs) of the Union. I mean, it's just, I enjoy talking with you. You are a very smart young lady who teaches me great things. And so I feel like when we're discussing something, regardless of what it is, there, there is more to learn each time. And so I just think that when we're talking books, it's just a no-brainer. It's, like, <laughs> it's pretty good. Where's the wine and where's the book? <laughs> we're good. <laughs> Come see us in a week. <laughs> right. We'll be here. We'll be here when right you need here. us. Still, Still talking. talking. Don't need us. Uh, <laughs> Still talking. So thank you. Talking yeah. with me. Uh, so I'm going to do the wrap up really, really super quick here. You get I to just listen have to, to sit it here, right? Yeah, you get to sit there and look beautiful. Uh, and okay, you get I'll to listen to this uh, twice okay. this evening. So prepare. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you can email us anytime at the same page pod at gmail.com. If you have any books you think we should read for the podcast, any questions, collaboration requests, if maybe once our upcoming books have been announced and you have read any of them and you had a favorite part or any uh, discussion questions that you would like included, send me a message on Instagram, send me an email. I would love for you folks to be a part of those discussions with my guests and I. Uh, If you would like to reach out to me specifically, you can find my blog that houses all of my full reviews, tours, um, new publications, if I ever remember to do those posts, uh, (laughs) at tacklingtbr.home.blog and on uh, Instagram. I couldn't remember the name of the social media platform, Instagram, for a second there, uh, (laughs) at tackling underscore tbr. Those, as always, will be down in the show notes. Uh, as for the podcast, you can find and connect with us on Instagram at the same page podcast, on Twitter at the same page pod, and you can find us on both Facebook and YouTube just by searching for the same page podcast. And then the last thing that I always say is if you are listening to the show and you like what you are hearing, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Uh, if you decided to go to Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, wherever it is you're listening and subscribing, leaving a positive rating, and even leaving your thoughts in a review, it would mean the world. Uh, (laughs) It only takes about a minute or two, and it helps other bookish folks find this weird, small, uh, kind of niche podcast. And with that, unless, do you have any social media you would like to plug? I don't, do you want people to follow you on Instagram? Do I have an Instagram? You have an Instagram. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, no, probably not a good idea. I, I don't do social media. I mean, you don't post on it ever, but you like. I stalk. I stalk you, with the you best You respond of them. to my stories a lot. That's because I um, love that. And Sam's. <laughs> I do Sam's too, I think. Mostly. All right. Well, don't follow her on Instagram then. <laughs> you can find me, maybe. Maybe. I don't, I don't probably know. Probably not. I don't think it's my name. Uh. It, it is not. Um, <laughs> with that, we will be back next week. We will talk about our books. Excellent. And it's going to be great. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Bye.